In her fascinating book on the ancient history of memory techniques, The Art of Memory, Francis Yates notes that St. Thomas includes memory techniques in his discussion of the virtue of prudence, but he provides very little detail regarding the material to which it might be applied. Still, she writes, gradually the idea began to dawn that the Middle Ages might think of figures of virtues and vices as memory images formed according to the classical rules. Yates also mentions St. Augustine's references to the mnemonic arts, and she muses that the glimpses into the memory of the most influential of the Latin fathers of the church raise speculations as to what a Christianized artificial memory might have been like. Would human images of things, such as faith, hope, and charity, and of other virtues and vices, or of the liberal arts, have been placed in such a memory, and might the places now have been memorized in churches? This book, in fact, creates just such a Christianized artificial memory. And I think St. Thomas would approve, if not of the end product, then at least of the intent. I'll give you more details as we apply it to the subject matter in the chapters ahead. I'll also show you how you can adapt these memory techniques for the retention of all sorts of knowledge. You could apply them to information in the Catechism of the Catholic Church or in the Bible. You could use them to remember important details in your office or classroom. You could even apply these techniques to something as mundane as your grocery list. My wife is grateful for that one. The main memory system built into this book is simple, straightforward, and effective. Oddly enough, in our modern world of nearly universal formal education, it is little known, although it has been around in various adaptations for over 2,500 years. When I have demonstrated these memory techniques to college juniors and seniors, many times I have heard, why didn't anybody ever teach us this before? That's why I call the first part of the book the stone the builders rejected. You might recall from Psalm 18, verse 22, and Luke chapter 20, verse 17, that the rejected stone would become the cornerstone. Historically speaking, the primary memory system of this book, and recently even memorization itself, has been like a stone neglected and rejected because its value was not realized. Yet today, it will serve as the cornerstone for the mighty house of memory we'll construct within this book.